Amen. You, you, you know, one of the things that uh, I hope everybody had a great uh, week, and I hope you had a great weekend, and we're looking forward for people to have a, a great week. Uh, just, we just pray for God to, to continue to be with us and guide us. I like, I like what my mom says, that, you know, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Verse Samuel 16, verse 1. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul? I guess some of you, how long y'all keep mourning for the flesh? Mourning for political party? Mourning for political leaders? Seeing I have rejected from reigning over Israel. You, you hear people sit there and say, Well, they're going to, they're going to, they, God chose them. Well, God must reject them too. And you sitting there still. Some of y'all still trying to sit there and go against God's will of mourning. <laughs> You're mourning for something that, that God says, See, and I reject it for reigning over Israel. Fill thy horn with oil and go. I will send thee to Jesus, Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among the sons. And Samuel said, how can I go? Saul here, he will kill me. And the Lord said, take us an effort with thee and say, I've come to sacrifice to the Lord. And he called Jesse to the sacrifice. And I will show thee what thou shalt uh, do. And thou shalt not him, shalt not unto him, not unto me, excuse me, whom I name unto thee. And Samuel did that which the Lord spake, and came to Beth Bethlehem. And the elders of the town trembled at his coming, and he said, Comest thou peacefully. And he said, Peacefully, I am come to sacrifice unto the Lord. Sanctify yourself, and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons, and called them to the sacrifice. And it came to pass when they were come, they looked on Eli and said, Surely the Lord anointed, anointed us before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Look not. Listen, those who teach racism, listen to what the word of God said. Those of you who teach to hate people based on the color of their skin, teaching people to hate because of political affiliation, teaching to hate somebody because of where they came from. What does the word say? And you should challenge your pastors and ministers. What does the Lord say in the Old Testament? But the Lord said to Samuel, look not on him on his continent or on the height of his statue. Look at what God is saying. But the Lord said in verse 7, Samuel, verse 7, 1 Samuel, verse 7, uh, ver chapter 16, verse 7. But the Lord said unto Samuel, look not on his contents, continents or on the height of his statue, because I refuse him. For the Lord sees not as man sees. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Then Jesus called Elabah, Elabah, and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, neither has the Lord chosen this. Then Jesse made Shammah to pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this. Again, Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen these. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are here all thy children? And he said, There remain as yet the youngest. And behold, he keepeth the sheep. Look, man, look, <laughs> man <is> so deep <laughs> that his that they that obviously you didn't call for the one that you want me to go get now. Huh? Look, 
Behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he comes hither. You know, isn't, isn't that, that, that was a form of discrimination. The fact that you didn't even let this man have opportunity, you know, I had somebody to say, they didn't have opportunity even just to get an interview. Because the fact is that they were not, they were denied. And I didn't forget the interview. I'm talking about they left David by himself because they chose and looked from the outward appearance and saying, this child, we, we can't be, it can't be this child. <laughs> We, we, we're not going to choose this child. Uh, no, no. But, you know what I mean? That's what we do. We're not going to choose this person because of the party of the face affiliation. We're not going to choose this person because of the color of the skin. So we're not even going to let them even get a chance for the man of God to take a look at them. How many of you doing that? In your different forms of fashion. How many of you people have hated people? You know, I mean, it's so obvious, isn't it? But we do it. We, that's what we do. And he said is, that is not how he operates. God does not operate from the outward appearance. Why are we being suckered into looking at the outward appearance instead of looking at the spirit? The, you know, those of you, David made mistakes, didn't he? He wasn't perfect. But God does not look at that with appearance. Stop doing it yourself. Follow God or you want to follow man. There's no justification. I know you heard it all your life to somebody that hates a man because of the color of his skin. I know you heard that. I know you're taught that. I know you're taught to, to, to hate somebody because of their poly affiliation. I know you taught that. And ministers, I guess many of you have been taught that. But the fact is, let's follow God, not man. If you don't, then you did exchange your soul, would you? Which some of you have done. And maybe, I guess, the eternal death is what you choose. Just what your perfect preference is, to so choose death. Choose eternal separation from God for the things that's perishing. Because I know you know, and I know that all of us are dying. Father flesh, the outward appearance. The outward appearance dies, withers away. <laughs> I look at some people when, look at the, the beauty of people when they're young, and then it, 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 because of life itself, it slowly withers away. And yet people have gave their soul up for something that is temporal. There's people in those graveyards right now that die based on their outward appearance. Hate it because of the outward appearance. Hate it because of differences. And we sit there, don't recognize that. Why would you change your soul? God does not look at, we're, we're giving our soul for the outward appearance, and yet God does not look at the soul. I mean, the outward appearance. What? Please listen what the word said. No, it's not about me. It's not about those ministers. It's not about the, the ministry. It's about God and who you follow. Jesus Christ, be the light of the world instead of sitting there being the, 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 the instrument of death. See, that's what they did to David. They left David and said he should not even be considered because of with our judgment and our appearance. Many of us are sitting there thinking that people are not being considered by God because of the outward appearance, because of political affiliation. That's what people are doing. That's what we think is cool. We think it's right. And you're killing yourself. You're disconnecting from God yourself because of this stuff. Please pass it on. Talk to your pastor and say, is it okay to hate? And you know he's going to not tell you that because he knows that's what the scriptures say. But he doesn't say it. He doesn't teach 
He doesn't reach out. See, we got to sit there and start going and preach the things that are causing people to stumble. And causing people to stumble is when we sit there and look at the outward appearance. We sit there and reject people because of outward appearance. We tell people that they, God is not concerned. You know, we'll be concerned because of outward appearance. Yeah, that's what they did to David too, didn't they? Because of the outward appearance from a person. We believe it was okay. They believed it was okay. God told the Samuel, don't look at the outward appearance. Because that's not, see, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to let the scripture speak for itself because obviously I don't think, I think over years and years, people ain't getting it. They want to they wanted look at the flesh. Verse 12, and he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy. That means look at the outward appearance. And that's another word. What does ruddy mean, right? Ruddy, small, uh, not a great statue, right? And withal of a beautiful continent and goodly to look to. Boy, that boy had it going on, right? And Lord said, arise, anoint him, for this is he. Chosen because of the heart of God. Not because of outward appearance. Obviously, the outward appearance, as far as the brothers and the father, he was not, he could have this they said the boy was ready with all of a beauty, con, beautiful continent and good to look to, but obviously he wasn't good enough to look to to be considered by his to be considered far as they were concerned by the man of God. They set him aside. They, they rejected him. And they wanted God to reject them too. And is that what we do? <laughs> is that what we teach people, right? We teach them, we reject them, therefore we think God can reject them. And yet God is choosing them. But we sit there and think that because it's okay to reject them, that God reject them. God, God ain't looking for what you, God don't care about. You are not the judge, but yet people make themselves the judge. Hmm. 13, then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. What? Because it's not the outward appearance that mattered. Now somebody said, well, he was good. Enough. He was not good enough for his brothers or his father to bring him before the man of God. So they discriminated against him and was trying to take him from being in a position of being blessed. And that's what we do. That's what, that's what we do. And I'm talking about we because it's, 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 it's guilt across the board, whether you're white or black, guilt across the board of trying to do something. <laughs> and reject something, and then think God rejects them too. We sit there, focus on the outward appearance of people, nationality, racism, all those things, for the exchange of our soul, because the world told us it's okay. You, you, you can be, if you feel this comfortable to, to say, I got a long life so I can change, you don't know how long you're going to live. Neither you know, of us do. Everybody got a point in time to die. You make the quality decision now, not to then continue to live by stupidity. You know? So think about that. God looks at the outward appearance, not, not the... God. I mean, excuse me, I'm sorry. God does not look at outward appearance. God looks at the spirit. We have a tendency to judge people and things based on the outward appearance. And that's where we make the mistake. You know, so I, I, I just want to pass that. I, I want to keep going further. I, I don't take up enough of your time as it is. So all I want to do is think about it. Stop looking from a cardinal fleshy perspective and start looking from a spiritual perspective. Start trusting that God changes a person regardless of the color of the skin, regardless of their political affiliation, regardless of whether they're adulterer or anything else. I ain't gonna bring all the other things up because many of you know what I'm talking about. You, you can't look at the outward appearance. 
And you have to trust the Holy Spirit to change somebody, not you. I know some of you sit there, well, I came to God because I didn't want to go to hell. Well, then you should be doing things in the spirits from that point forward. But you sit there, think that it works just because it worked for you. God was already dealing with you. Don't you understand that? That's the reason why it was bothering you. And that's the reason why you came to Christ, because you knew you was wrong. But you sit there and think that that's when you got to bring people to fire and shame themselves, opposed to showing the gospel because you're not taught to teach or preach shame. You're taught to teach and preach the gospel. Talk to talk about the kingdom of God so that what is the benefits in coming to the kingdom of God? You're not sitting there and understanding that God changes the hearts of man. If we let, if we allow them to grow and be exposed to the things of God instead of us sitting there trying to make them be exposed to the things of us. Think about it. <laughs> Pray about it. Be spiritually minded, not cardinally minded. You are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. Be that. Be in the spirit. Trust the spirit of God. Trust the love of God. So many of us are so gravitated toward the flesh so over and over and over again. Exchanging your soul for what? Losing your joy, losing your patience, losing your peace. For what? For the outward appearance. Instead of looking for the inward. Being selfish. Instead of glorifying God, we want to glorify ourselves. I think it's time to reevaluate and continue to evaluate. Do I follow God? Do I follow Christ? Do I want to be led by the Holy Spirit? Or do I want to be led by my political body? I want to be led by my color of my skin. I want to be led by my nationality. All of things are perishing. None of those things will stay the same. But Christ is the same today and yesterday. Wow. Follow him. That's all I can, all I can offer and put before the table of you. Follow him. Amen. All right, let's pray. Dear Father, thank you for this opportunity to come and worship and praise your holy name. You said when two or three gather your name, you'll be the midst of them. I now invite and receive the Holy Spirit to continue to guide us. Take these words, take these statements, allow it to touch somebody's heart. If it's just one, let it reach the right one. Because that's what matters. Does it reach the right one? Does the right one get what God is saying? And I know that the right one will hear it. Thank you, Heavenly Father. I praise your holy name. In Jesus' name, pray. Amen, amen, amen. And God bless you. I'll check you later. Uh, I'll finish it, pick us up on Thursday. But hey, man, let's get beyond this flesh. Let's start thinking and be spiritual minded for us, for yourself. Not for people, not trying to please people. Trust God. All right. Well, I'll check you later. And uh, thank you for listening, those who will listen. Thank you for listening to the one that God is reaching out for. But no, he's not trying to, for me. He said, he made this message not for a lot of people, but he knows who it's for. Thank you, Lord, for that person who will listen to this video. It's for you. And we'll do everything we can, because God will go to that one sheep out of 99. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. I'll check you later. Bye-bye. <laughs> This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you.